On a bar. Sorry guys, watch here. Can you guys hear? Why is this up? Hello? Yes. Hello. Yeah, I'm Beeping Prophet. Uh, I don't care who you are. Are you are you the El Yafawi or you're somebody else? No, I'm somebody else. Okay, so are you Mohammed? You blocked me. You blocked me in your chat. I don't know. I just asked one question. Are you Mohammed? Are you Mohammed? You follow I'm Muhammad? An okay. I'm an agnostic. No, you're not. You just called yourself Weeping Prophet. Okay, if you're agnostic, give me your name, and I want you to say, I, so-and-so, say Muhammad is a son of the devil. He's a bastard. Why would I say that? Yeah, that's good. So you're a Muhammadan. Okay, open up your Quran. And ask, open okay, your ask, Quran. Do you want to get blocked? No. Okay, you open your Quran. Me. Open your Quran. I'm going to block you. I don't got time for cowards who are ashamed of their bastard prophet because you, you denied Muhammad even though you're Muhammadan. I don't, mm -hmm. I don't fall for your taqiyah. Go to chapter 4 of the Quran, verse 24. Quran? Yeah. No, no. The Vedas. Go to the Quran. Dude, which was? I just said chapter 4, verse 24. Sorry, guys. I got iron in my shirt. Hope that doesn't mind you. Well, ladies, I hope my shirt doesn't mind. It didn't bother you. I should have ironed it. Sorry. Okay, read for me chapter 4, verse 24. What? Chapter 4, verse 24. Surat Tanisa. Stop wasting my time, dude. Except that I uh, and marry a woman. Okay, pause one second. Pause one second. Uh, what are you reading from? Is the Quran in your hand? No, it's Sahih uh, International. Sahih International. Okay, so is it online or is it in your hand? Oh, online. Online. Okay. Okay. And what website did you go to? Uh, Quran.com. Okay. Good. So notice, guys, an agnostic who knows where to find the Quran online. He went to Quran.com. Did you catch that? I want you guys to pay attention. Hold on, guys. Hold on. Be, be patient. Here's a guy who's an agnostic who knew to go to Quran.com and to read Sahih International. You see? Okay. Now read for me chapter 4, verse 24. Good. And also prohibited to you are all married women except those your right hand possess. Okay, now let me ask you a question. Let me ask you a question. According to Sunan Abu Dawood, number 2150, this ayah, this ayah was revealed, according to you Mohammedans, when a group of jihadi thugs captured some beautiful woman. They're at Altas. And they were married. And they didn't want to have sex with them. But then your God sent this verse down saying, it's okay, they're lawful for you, even though their husbands are alive. Would you be okay if Muslims came to your territory, took you captive? You're not a Muslim because you're agnostic, you say. So they took your mother yep. captive who, and your father's alive, and they took your wife captive, and they had sex with them. Would your mother and your wife and you be okay with that? No, absolutely not. Say it again. No, absolutely not. Okay, so I want you to say Muhammad was a dirty demon, a raping whore of the devil i don't like to abuse people you should so because the, you. the quran abuses people the muhammad sadith abuses people the bible abuses people who deserve it he he may be a bad person yeah according to the hadith. He's maybe or according to hadith what about the quran is he a good person according to the quran i uh, i mean if you take out of context, if you take some verses out of context. Oh, maybe. take verses out of context. Give me the context of 424. Remember, this guy's an agnostic. Give me the context of 424. I mean, in those days, it was a practice to take women. Oh, in those there. days, it was okay to rape women like your mother. So it was okay then. I'm not saying it's okay. Like, okay, but now okay, let me ask I you another it. question. That's, that's, I, accept, I accept. I accept it. Yeah, that's okay. wrong. That's okay, wrong. you accept it now. All right. Let me ask you another yeah. question. In those days of Muhammad, they condemned people for marrying the wives, the divorced wives of their adopted sons. But in chapter 33, verse 37, the Quran says, no, no, it's okay. You can marry the divorced wife of your adopted son. But in those days, it wasn't okay. So Muhammad took something that wasn't okay and made it okay. So why did he make this okay, raping women who are married? Why didn't he change it like he changed other things? I accept there are some like uh, in intimate details in Quran, but I think maybe they are like forgery or something. They're forgery. Oh, so I mean, how do you know they're forgery? Huh? How do you know they're forgery? 
Who told you? What do you get that from? Where did you get that you know, from? There, there, are some Quranis, there are some Quranis who believe certain chapters are like uh, corrupted or like added later. So are you, verses. so as an, an agnostic, why do you follow them? I thought you're agnostic. You're not Muslim. Yeah, I'm, I, I'm not trying to be an apologetic to Islam. But Come on, man. You know you lie. I mean, you know you're lying, man. Come on, stop lying. Can, can I ask my question? It actually, depends. You, you have to be questions. honest. You have to tell me you are a Muslim, but you're ashamed to defend Muhammad. Then I'll let you ask. If I was a Muslim, why would I say Quran is wrong? Like because some parts of it because is wrong. in chapter um, 16 of the Quran, I'll answer you. Chapter 16, verse 106, you are allowed to lie and deny Muhammad as long as in your heart it's full of faith in order to use taqiyah against the unbelievers. So don't teach me your deen. It's in chapter 16, verse 106 of the Quran, where your God and your prophet allowed people to deny Muhammad, as long as in your heart you believe in him, to use taqiyah against the unbelievers, chapter 3, verse 28. So are you trying to deceive me, brother? My brother? I cannot, I cannot prove you how I think. Okay. okay. All right, let's see. Uh, let's see if you have a sincere question. I'll try to answer it because I have a guy yes. waiting about the Trinity. Go ahead, ask me. Okay. So I was reading about uh, Paul's conversion. <laughs> <laughs> Why are you concerned about Paul's conversion? Because he wrote like 13 to 14 books. What's, in the New well, why do you care? You're agnostic. Yeah, I want to know the truth. Why do you want to know the truth? I, are you an apologetic? No, I don't apologize for people like you. So... Why do you care about Paul and his conversion? And why do you care about how many letters he wrote? You're agnostic. Yeah, but I want to know the truth, like what you believe and what what. Why do you want to know is. the truth? So you mean on the website, Sheikh Google, where you have thousands of YouTube channels and websites that answer Paul's conversion testimony in the book of Acts, reconciling the differences by going to the Greek language. Have you looked at any of them? Yeah. Have but you? they were not satisfactory. They were trying uh, okay. to cover it up. Show me why. Do you know the Greek? I don't know Greek, but... Okay, I so how do you know it's not satisfactory Greek. if they show you in the Greek that there are different words that have different nuances of meaning, showing there is no contradiction? How can it not be satisfactory to an idiot like you who doesn't know the Greek? Because if there is no contradiction, why would why would that question arise in the first place? And why because would you're basing it on an English translation, moron. But if you go to the Greek, someone reading Greek doesn't see a contradiction. Which part of that wasn't clear? I know you are in a free country, but you know how it's like living. Okay, in but Iraq. you're not answering me. Someone reading the Greek of the Book of Acts would see there is no contradiction because they're reading it in the original language, like the Quran is in Arabic. So when I told you, did you go to the websites and when they broke down the Greek, you said not satisfactory. Explain to me why the Greek is not satisfactory. Give me the Greek. Show me why the Greek, because it uses different words in the Greek, is not satisfactory. Give me your answer. So Paul was saying in Acts 9, 4 to 7. Okay, what does the Greek say? Read the Greek for me. Read the Greek. I can't read Greek. Like if it's translated into English, then no, I no, no, no. Go to the Greek. See, you're not listening to me. You fake Mohammedan stone licker. Let me try it again. I know where you're going. See, without you asking me the question, I knew what you were going to do. You're going to say that in Acts nine, it contradicts Acts twenty-two. Even though I've written an article exactly. on it showing. See, say it again. Exactly right. Exactly. And yeah, you yeah, didn't yeah. ask me the question. I knew that's where you're going, right? Yes. That's how I know you're a fake, like Muhammad, because I knew where you're going. Because I've, I've written so, an article. I've written an article showing it. Now, before I block you, I'm going to give you the link to the Greek. Read the Greek of Acts 9, and then I'm going to give you the Greek of Acts 22. Then tell me where in the Greek, because Acts is written in Greek, there's a contradiction. Deal? Okay. Can I ask you the next no, question? No, deal. You already blocked me. I don't know why. No, you're no, no. Yeah, deal? deal? No, no. Wait, wait, wait. Yeah. Deal? I'm going to give you the Greek of Acts 9. And then I'm going to give you the Greek of Acts 22 because Luke wrote in Greek. And then I want you to read the Greek and show me that the Greek, not the English translation, the Greek that was written in is contradiction. Deal? Yeah, deal. Okay, here's the Greek. Read it from. I mean, obviously, the guys who are watching your videos are okay, all Greek you're, experts. So you're yeah, going to read the Greek, right? No, no, no. You're going to read the Greek, right? No, I can't read the Greek. Okay, so you just said deal. You're going to read the Greek for me in Acts 9 and the Greek for me of Acts 22. Yeah, if it's in Latin letters, yes, I can do it. No, no, it's in Greek. What Latin letters? How would I know what, okay, what okay. Greek spells? 
Really? So say it again. How would you what? I don't know. Okay. That's all, yeah, that's all I wanted to know. Guys, did you see where I knew he where he was going? Without him telling me the objection, I knew what he was going to say. All right. Do you know why I knew? You guys are a witness. Do you want to know, know why I knew he was going to go to Acts 9 and Acts 22? Do you guys know why? Without mentioning it. He didn't even tell me, but I knew. Do you know why? Not because I'm a prophet. I don't want to scare you like, man, this guy's a prophet. No. It's because been there, done that, got the T-shirt. Been there, done that, got the T-shirt. You get it? I've heard this objection over and over again. The account of Paul's conversion, Acts 9, contradicts that in Acts 22. And yet there have been scholars of the Bible who go back to the original language and show that in the Greek, there is no contradiction. You see the point? Been there, done that, got the t-shirt. Now, Marks, Ali Afawi, answer the question. If I ask your mother, if she's a widow, to marry me for three days and I pay her money, then I divorce her. Would that mean that I'm treating your mother as a whore? Am I treating her as a prostitute? Yes or no? Come on, pagan. I know you're ashamed of your filthy demon called Muhammad. So if I, let's do this again. If your mother was a widow and I said, I want to marry you for three days, and after I'm done defiling you in the bed, I'll divorce you and give you money. Would I be treating your mother like a whore? See, notice he's calling me his God's name. You see that? I know your God likes vaginas. He blows in them because you're filthy scum bastard of the devil. Send this scum back to Mecca. You see, guys, these filthy bastards? Does your prophet like vaginas? Because you just you called me a P word. Okay, so are you going to answer the question? Ha, 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 ha. Yeah, as emotional as your prophet who treated your mother like a whore and your sister like a whore and raped them. <laughs> so, are you going to answer the question? We got, I think, a Mohammedan who wants to ask me questions, all right? Let's try it. I think, I hope he's not a Mohammedan. Man, fire session today, huh? Want to meet. What's up, friend? I can't pronounce your name. How do you say it? Uh, brother, brother Sam, you say it as uh, Malim Chaka wa Musa. Boya Shaka. What's up, brother? Are you, Ibn Musa, yeah, you I don't know. Is it, is it Muslim yeah. or is it Christian? Now I am a Christian. Glory to Jesus Christ. You uh, left Islam for Jesus? Amen. Amen. Let me let me tell you a little bit about myself. Please, go I ahead. come from East Africa, uh, from Tanzania. Um, I gave my life to the Lord back in 2001, Amen. August 4th. Actually, this, I just celebrated my birthday in the Lord the other, this month. Now, I was very confused as a teenager um, just having come to the Lord because I, I come from a family which is predominantly Muslim and Christian. I would say like we are 50-50. So growing up, we... We both could go to church. We could go to the mosque. Um, and then in 2001, I gave my life, uh, my, my life to the Lord. I was just go, getting into high school. Mm -hmm. And at that moment, uh, uh, the debates they were, were just very predominant. Muslims were asking so many questions, and, and the Christians were not really able to answer. And so... At that point, I almost dropped back into Islam because, you know, I couldn't be able to uh, answer all these questions about the Trinity, about the Sonship. Uh, there were so many questions. At one point, I was so confused. The only thing that I knew for sure is that there is a point in life I was not born again, and there's a point that I gave my life to Christ mm -hmm. because I was led to Christ by two former Muslims who were my classmates. Um, but so at, in, in the midst of all that confusion, I came across uh, answering Islam website and what a relief. Hmm. And that, that has been for me my journey. I would say I'm one of the students that you've Amen. never really met. Hallelujah. But hmm. it, is, it is through answering Islam 
that I really was able now to start my uh, journey Hallelujah. into apologetics. Hallelujah. And where I am today is I've, I've been built through your your articles, Brother Silas and Al Fadi's book, um, and, and all that. That is so. So so right now I am involved in the apologetic ministry, reaching out to the Swahili speaking Muslims from East Africa. Um, and, and but I'm, I would say that really my transformation began the day I discovered the Answering Islam website. Glory to God. Uh, Hallelujah. Yeah, and, and so God bless you so much. Love you, uh, I think I, I, I love a few questions in regarding to the Trinity. Sure. I've come across um, some Aryan kind of, of, of brothers um there you know, with ad an adventist background but uh, yes. these guys deny the trinity yes so, what's their objections um, we can deal with them yeah so so the argument is from proverbs chapter 8 and basically the argument is that uh, whereas the son is not a creation of the father but there was a time the son did not exist say so prove it so where where does yes. it say he didn't yes. exist? So, so my question is, how can we, because their objection uh, is not primarily similar to the Jehovah's Witness. Yes, yes. But the Jehovah's Witness would argue that the sun is a creation. Yeah, these no, guys, it's, yeah, these I know guys the accept that the sun is not a creation, but they hold to the position that there was a sun, yeah. there was a time it did not exist. Yeah, so no, I'm aware of their you, position. My, very easy. I say you're playing games, semantics. If he didn't exist, that means he was brought into being. And that's what you mean when you talk about creation. Creation is that which is brought into being, right? Yes. Sir. So they're playing games. It's word games. It's semantics. No, you do believe he's a creature because if he's brought into being, there's a time in which he didn't exist. He was brought into existence. That's creation to be brought into existence. So my question is, prove it. Show me where it says there's a time in which he didn't exist. So when I question, when I questioned them that they used uh, John chapter eight verse forty two to say that the son came out of the father. No, uh, that's in other not words, what it says. John eight forty two is not talking about the son coming out of the father before creation. It's saying he came out of the father from heaven into the world. What's the context? Mm -hmm. What's the contextual yeah. meaning? If you read John eight forty two, and I'll have first last posted. John 8, 42, the context is Jesus coming from the Father into the world because the Father sent him into the world to those who were his own. Where does it say he came out of the Father before creation came into being? First last, John 4, 8, 42, brother here. Jesus said to them, if God were your father, you would love me, for I proceeded from forth and came from God, nor have I come of myself, but he sent me. Show me in that text where it says that Jesus came out of the Father before creation. It's not about coming out of the Father from heaven into the world to them. Amen. Amen. Brother Sam, let me... I bless the Lord because of you. Thank you for being my mentor. I um, mean, I've brother. learned a lot, a lot from you. May the Lord take you places. Uh, and may he protect you. May he protect your Amen. testimony. I know Amen. the devil would want to attack you more. He would want to attack your personality. He would, yes. he, he'd want to keep you down. But lift up your eyes because Hallelujah. the Lord is great things for you. Amen. So brother. don't 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 even allow him to put you down. Never. We, we yeah, that the Lord is is using you mightily for his glory. Hallelujah. As long as there are brothers like Amen. you praying for me, the Lord will strengthen me and I'm here to serve you. So anytime you have a question, contact me. We'll go live so we can benefit others with the answers. But you got the answer to John 842, right? Yes, sir. Thank Any you. Any passage they quote to you will be about Jesus coming from the Father, from heaven, into the world. There is no passage that says, before creation came into being, the, the Son came out of the Father from a point of non-existence. Say, prove it. They can't. That's okay. heresy. So, hope that helped. Do you have other questions? Amen. And for today, that, that will be it. I'll, I'll contact you with many other Man, questions. We love you, on, brother. On this the Lord Jesus Amen. floods you in his presence, seal you by his spirit, and use you mightily for the glory of his name. In Jesus' name, brother. Amen. Amen. God bless you, too. God bless you, brother. Take care. Okay, we got a Mohammedan. If he's a nasty one, I will block him. Adas Ali. So if he's nasty, guys, I'm going to... Yellow.
Yeah, put down the volume in the background. Yo, hello. Hello. Yes. Hi, Sam. How are you? Aris Ali, what uh, what are you, my friend? Ali sounds well, like you're Shia. Uh, actually, uh, you uh, call me Amanasti. First thing, I'm an ex-Muslim. Oh, good. Praise God. Yeah. I didn't know that because your name scared me. Aris Ali. Um, what's up, brother? Uh, so what, what should I do, you know? So that name okay, actually... Bro. Praise God yeah, for you. You left Islam. It, you know? No, you left Islam. Praise the Lord. That's, that's good news. What's going on, brother? And then uh, Aras is not a Muslim name, uh, as you know. Yeah, well, I don't know what your background. You're not you're not Iranian. Are you Kurdish? What are you? Kurdish, I'm. Uh huh. My cousins, <laughs> the cousins of the Assyrians. As, are you Assyrian? Yes, I'm Mashuri, but I don't speak Arabic. Sadly, I only speak Ashuri. You speak Arabic as well. But I know I only speak Ashuri. I don't speak Arabic. Shlonak aini shlonak. I think I think actually uh, Ashuri, uh, Assyrian and the Kurdish people, they are actually uh, uh, because victim of the Islam. Uh, you got it. No, in the victim, big victim. So you, yeah, we are big yeah, victim yeah. of Islam. But thank God you left Islam. So are you now following Jesus? Yeah, uh, Jesus. I accept Jesus Hallelujah. as my Lord. Praise the Lord, yeah. guys. We got a Hallelujah. Kurdish for you Assyrians that live in Iraq. Here's a Kurdish man who left Islam for Jesus. Guys, you just heard two Muslims who left Islam, came to Jesus, and then the other man who was about to become Muslim but stayed in the faith. Man, talk about God blessing. Jesus bless you, brother, and seal you for his glory. Amen. What a night, man. What a day today. How can I help you, my brother? Talk to yeah, me. Yeah, actually, uh, uh, anyway, uh, I know uh, a lot about this cult, cult of yes. Islam, so I don't have to ask you anything about Good. that because I've been listening, I've been reading about Islam a lot. So I come to actually the, the com conclusion uh, that religion is only that cult has come from the evil, devil, whatever. Yes. Uh, uh, the f actually, that's something I I'm really impressed about your capability and knowledge you have. Uh, I really, really, I'm impressed about that. So All glory I to the Holy Spirit. We give the Holy Spirit glory. But what I'm going to do in the near future, maybe in a month from now, if you're free, I'll bring you on my YouTube channel and you can talk about Islam and why it's evil from someone who used to be. It's, if you're comfortable, that's up to you. You let me know. Well, it is very obvious, actually. I mean, if anybody... Uh, Think logically, they can uh, straight away they can realize that religion is evil. It's not from the uh, God. God. Absolutely, it's not from the God. Yes. Unfortunately, still my family is uh, actually the yes. Muslim, and uh, they are forcing me to go back to Islam. But I reject it. I reject it. Right. So uh, I will never go back to Islam Amen. because I don't want to follow the devil. Hallelujah. Now, can I ask you some? Are yeah. you in a safe country where you can be safe? Well, I'm in UK. I am already okay. safe. Okay, good. Because I was thinking maybe if you're in the Middle East, then it's dangerous. But if you let me know, we'll talk private. If you're comfortable, we can either go on StreamYard. But if you don't want to be seen, if you want to, I can interview you. What led you out of Islam and why it's evil? And we don't even have well, to use your name. That's up to you. I don't. If you don't have to. I don't. Thanks, to, uh, thanks God. I don't fear anyone. Uh, plus, I really, uh, I'm very, very happy to talk. Even good. I show my face. But the problem is, I am, I'm not a really good speaker. No, actually, <laughs> believe it or not, the way you're speaking, it's clear enough. People understand. Everyone's understanding yeah. you because you're very clear. Yeah, so don't, don't worry about you have an accent. It's at least clear. People can get it. They're getting it, understanding. So, but you let me know because it'll be probably a month from now. God willing, in shut up, if the Lord will. We will do it. Well, uh, anytime. I know. I mean, uh, so you have my Skype now. Yes, so and stay in contact. Uh, with me. No, I will contact so, you, and you stay in contact with me, and rejoice it, with this brother. Let me just tell uh, him to pray for you. His name is Aras. Aras, pray. Aras is my name. Aras. Yes, Aras. Aras, 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 Aras. 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 Say it again. Aras. It's a Kurdish name, actually, Aras. It can be Iranian as well, but I'm Kurdish anyway. Okay. And this I'm Kurdish brother who now follows Jesus, pray for him and God protect him. Pray for the other brother who called and pray for Rahit, uh, Rahit, all of them. God protect them and use them mightily. We're seeing people fall in love with Jesus and leaving the cults. Glory to the triune God. You are the man, brother. Thank you very much. Well, tomorrow I am going to start a new job as a taxi driver, which is I never done it. I'm a bit nervous. Listen, let <laughs> so me tell I you something. So I need you to break for me to 
gotten out of this go away. <laughs> Father, in Jesus' name, Aras is your child, purchased by the blood of your son, the Lord Jesus, born of your spirit. Father, you are a good God. When our Lord taught us to pray to you, he asks, he tells us to ask you, give us this day our daily bread. Give us what we need, not just for today, but even for tomorrow, today. So by faith, Father. You are an infinitely good God. You are his father. You are our father. You love and adore us. You love him. Father, be with him. Help him. Give him grace from your spirit to know the roads, to drive safely. And give him grace as he's driving this taxi to be a voice for Jesus. To everyone who comes into that car, keep him safe from harm, safe from Satan and Satan's children. And give him divine appointments and show him, Father. Father, hear my prayer in the name of Jesus for his sake, not mine. Bless him, Abba. Lord Jesus, bless him as you've blessed him. And Holy Spirit, go before him and make his path clear. And use him to drive safely, to be able to provide for himself and his, and his daily needs. And to preach the gospel that that taxi will be a vehicle proclaiming the light of the gospel by your power, Holy Spirit. We entrust him. To you. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Amen. Thank you, Holy Spirit, in Jesus' Amen. name. Amen. Amen. Amen to that. Amen. So, the, my last word, actually, uh, thank you very much. Actually, we are uh, a few Kurdish people who are watching your video. Mm. So, we are really impressed about you. So, Praise especially, God. you know uh, a lot about Islam. I, I can't say more than a lot. Well, thank and, you, uh, you. You know how to actually confront those. Uh, uh, people who defend in Islam this cult. So this is very, very important, you know. So I am meeting my priest every I can Hallelujah. say we we are discuss the Bible, all this. So, yeah, sorry. Go ahead. No, no, I'm just saying let them know. Sam is Ashuri, he's a Syrian from our uh, from the homeland. So they know I'm a Syrian. Are, I know Ashuri, I know Ashuri my friend. I know the Ashuri. Yeah, that's so who I am. You are my brother. Yes we are. So I'll Look, again, so you have my Skype. This yes. is my Skype. No, I am no. I never changed that Skype. I have this Skype I, for a few years now. So anytime, if you need me, if you actually yes, I want will. me to. In a few more weeks, I will reach out to you and also bring you on. So God willing, I will reach out to you, brother. Well, I will do it with all my heart. I love you, brother. And Jesus loves you Thank more. You. So it is nice to meet you. Thank God you. Bless you, sir. Lord be with have you. a good night. God bless you. Bye. Bye. God bless you. Oops, sorry. I, I closed. Sorry. Didn't, didn't, didn't mean to. Hold on. I just didn't mean to hang up. Uh, sorry about that. Anyway, what a glorious testimony. You have Muslims testifying. Guys, pray God keeps me humble and teachable. You have Muslims testifying. An Assyrian, a son of Asher, a son of Nineveh, an Assyrian, Ashuraya, Aturaya. God set apart. See, I'm about to get moved in my spirit right now. God set apart this Assyrian and even Muslims testifying that they are amazed by the knowledge I have of Islam and the Bible. And you know that's the goodness of the Holy Spirit. That the Lord, <clears throat> I'm moved in my spirit, that the Lord would put his hand on me, this Assyrian, Ashuraya, Aturaya, from the tribe of Jiru, in this household, the youngest of six, the youngest of six, and the Lord, sorry guys, it moves me in my heart, it does. <clears throat> the Lord put his finger on me and he said, Of your father's house, of all the children of your mother, you will be my servant. <clears throat> and I will use you as a light from this great people of Syria. It is an honor for me to be a light for the glory of Jesus, <clears throat> representing my people, <clears throat> the Assyrians. <clears throat> Ashuraya Aturaya, Bnunit Ubnatit Ashur.
<clears throat> Sorry, guys. It's an honor that I could be an Assyrian serving my people, lifting up their heads for the glory of Jesus and preaching to the nations. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Anyway. <clears throat> All right. Sorry, guys. Uh, 